If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. So in this episode of Mind Pump, we talk about my church experience. Were they trying to expel the demons out of me? Yeah. Were they successful? Was he sweating like a whore? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Team Jesus. Yeah, yeah. We talk about the uh, Winter Olympics. Uh, Sean White. What a badass. Crushing everything. The best. Uh, and uh, there was another French, uh, I think, figure dancer in the... Ska- in the, in the oh, yeah. somebody got they, that booby out. Little booby... Sh- they booby will not through. do so well on Health IQ. Oh, well, because of the dangerous... Uh, uh, That's right. How their sports are dangerous. Very risky. We That's are right. sponsored by Health IQ. It is life insurance for fit people. Go to healthiq.com forward slash mind pump. Take their fitness quiz to see what your prices are. Then we talk about Russia's Troll Factory. What? Yeah, they, they're they're pumping out trolls like crazy. Oh. Uh, we talk about WikiLeaks, flatulence, and how it led <laughs> it led to a flight being grounded. Literally, yeah. somebody farted so bad yeah, that guy must have just been ripping them. Got a his plane, ass kicked. A plane yeah. had to make an emergency landing. Wow. Uh, and then we talk about our L.A. porn house. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I like how Doug wrote that up there. <laughs> and our mind pump uh. travel diet and our travel staple, Organifi Green Juice. Look, we are sponsored by Organifi. Duh, that's, that's why we bring it. Some yeah. of the most qualified, some of the most quality, excuse me, best quality supplements you'll find. If you it go comes to, in handy. I'll OrganifiShop.com. You can get a discount if you enter the code mind pump. And then Adam also mentioned brain.fm. Brain.fm has these beats that you listen to that put you in different states of mind, sleep or meditation or focus. That's actually one of my favorite ones. For all my people that need help with sleep, get this. You go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump, you get 20% off. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, this particular individual's roommate is having trouble with sleep. Should you just suffocate him with your pillow? (laughs) You could do that. That's what we suggest. The next question what are the health benefits of a high carb diet? Sounds crazy, but it might actually be good for Blast you sometimes. Away. The next question was, does it take longer for someone to lose weight if they've been overweight for a long period of time versus somebody who just gained weight in the last couple of years to lose weight? Like, is there a difference in their bodies and what is the difference? And also, is there a difference psychologically and what is that difference and how do you tackle that issue? And the final question, uh, this particular trainer works in a gym and their manager- See if you can tell where Sal gets triggered here. (laughs) Their manager recommends that they do 40 minute long HIIT workouts or circuit style workouts with everybody because they think it'll be good for business. Yeah, great. I can make a prediction. This manager was not number one in their region (laughs) (laughs) or whatever company they work for. Uh, also, except um, an injury toll. This month, we launched a new Maps program. <sighs> it is by far of all of our Maps programs. This is the most effective fat burning program, especially in a short period of time. Six weeks long. It's a six week hit program, it's high intensity interval training program by us. Uh, designed. You've wanted it, but you've wanted it programmed correctly. We got it for you for maximum we did. fat loss in a six-week period. It's available right now at mindpumpmedia.com, along with many of our other programs, including our bundles. So, if you want any information on workout programs and you trust us because you know we're smart and we're honest, if you've listened to seven hundred episodes. I hope you trust. And us. we're 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 not ugly. I was maybe say, that's why they don't trust. I was going to say good. <laughs> I was going to say good looking, but <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say they good looking more. anymore. I feel like not ugly is more accurate. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're just we're not ugly, but we're honest. I'll go with that. You want more information on all of our fitness programs Speak and for yourself and you're serious? Go to go to almost all of us are humble. Yeah. Go to <laughs> mindpumpmedia.com. You guys didn't even asked me what happened. Uh, what I did yesterday. Oof, what did you do, brother? I, you I, you know what I did yesterday. No, I don't. What do you mean? Yeah, I do, bro. I told you. Uh, you told me? No, you didn't. Terrible memory. Tell me. I do have a terrible memory. <laughs> Where did I go yesterday? You made a big old deal about it. I made a big old deal. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. You oh, went my to, God. You went you to church and I didn't say anything. Shame you, on me. You didn't burn up in flames. Shame on me. I did feel a little- I can't believe I didn't bring that up. I'm, except that's the thing Are I had to sweat, bring up. You sweating? <laughs> I know. I had, so- 
I told the boys, I said, That's man, right. I got this. I uh, oh, I, I know I wrote I down something I wanted that. to for sure bring yeah. up the m- minute we got in the room together, uh, and it totally slipped my mind, and that is exactly what I wanted you to know bring what's up. Funny? What's like, funny? How dare we not? We've been having all this talk, and I had no idea, but you fuckers are getting messages from people. Yes. <laughs> We're like, oh, they're so excited to get me to convert me or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are they doing? They're just telling you like, bring well, this person like, on yeah, the show. This person would be a good person. Well, to after, talk to after the, the after the uh, you know hashtag Team Jesus thing that we did or said, uh, I did you, feel uh, like heat while I was in there. Like I did feel, <laughs> I did feel things start to start to heat up. No, yeah. I went, I went. So it's my kid's Catholic school. It's at a ch- and there's, you know there's a church there. So. Uh, you know, Jessica wanted to go, so we went because it is interesting. It is interesting. She's never been a part of any of these things, so it's fascinating to even go with someone who's never been, yeah, to or at least minimally been to church. Tough one to go to for your first one, though. Catholic. Yeah. yeah well, it depends. Is, uh... It depends on how you're looking at it. Now we're going into it not necessarily looking to, you know, worship God or become you know Catholics or Christians. That's not really the goal. We're going in there just to go in there. See the energy spies. and not spy, but just to, <laughs> just to, I mean, cause Catholic church is very, and I know I went as a kid, it's right? Very ritualistic. There's so many different rituals and things you got to do. It's, there's a lot. This of, is why I'm saying it's a tough one to do there, there, yeah. but it can make it easy because if well, you're, if I don't you're know. into looking for those if things, if you're someone who's on borderline, like, you know, atheist, I think going in there and going to a Catholic church would be a far more challenging because depends. you're going to see the things that make you, that you think are very dogmatic or it depends how you view them. So if I'm going in there like, eh, this is all, you know, then yeah, that's what used to happen to me. But now that I'm going in and I'm trying to look deeper into the ritual of things like why do people all put their hands like this at a certain point why do people reply this way why do just like that time when Paul Check did his thing over the food where it kind of looked like he prayed and I and rather than thinking like that's stupid I examined it and realized that if we were all mindful before we ate whether you pray or not you're more likely to be healthy I went in there and I'm looking at things differently and so is she and so it was really fascinating but you know I forget about Catholic Church mm. Like for sure, the Catholic Church is superior to other churches in one aspect. For sure, I can make this claim. The neat, <laughs> so much neat. Oh, oh, up down, up down. Yeah. Oh, stand, God, kneel, I sit, that sit. About yeah, stand, stand, <laughs> sit, kneel. Oh. Back forth. You know what's a great discussion uh, to it listen to? Um, and I, I went down the rabbit hole. I think it was off jo- Jordan Peterson originally, and then I started getting into listening to a lot of Sam Harris stuff. And Sam Harris did an interview with like the number one or the largest. Uh, church congregation the pastor of that right mm-hmm. that church or the pope or it wasn't the pope excuse me <laughs> he interviewed was, the pope yeah no he <laughs> it was uh but this guy was like well well known in one of the biggest churches and you know it, those that don't know sam harris is like a, a profound like atheist right he's like super yeah and very very intelligent super smart intelligent, intelligent. Dude, yeah, yeah and yeah so great debater but a great they had a great conversation so i i tell i tell everybody like that's like loves that type of stuff like in mm-hmm. hearing it from from two different perspectives and 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 guys articulating it very well and having a, a very healthy discussion. No, I, like that. I like that stuff. I think it's funny that it's taboo yeah. that we can't talk about those things. No, I think it's, uh, that's why I think, yeah, revisiting this kind of stuff, that, that's that's really like the motive. It's like, let's why can't we talk about certain things? Like you can't, can't like avoid all these massive subjects like let's just like dive into it and see what comes out fear of speaking is one of the most dangerous things ever so what was it like right? dude so yeah, tell yeah, me yeah. Tell it was cool we, we yeah. went in we went early we went at 8 a.m so it was a bunch of old like a lot of old people the priest comes out and or the priest isn't you know comes around and and he knows who's new even though it's a big <laughs> church so he comes oh, they know to everybody dude. he comes yeah. out to us and he's like oh thank you you know i know it's your first time coming welcome yeah. and so we're like okay thank you and then other people were kind of like eyeballing us a little bit because we're new and it was cool it was interesting you know you're, you're just paying attention i'm paying attention how many differently. peace be with you's did you get you know, there's a lot of those you know peace be with you yeah. and also with you you know and all that <laughs> and uh, you know right. saying the lord well prayer. tell me tell me about the message what was the message that they gave that day we it was lent because lent started so uh you know you know how the story goes jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and was tempted by you know, Satan and came out of it and, and wasn't, uh, didn't succumb to temptation. And so Lent is supposed to be, you're supposed to give up something for that. So we t- they talked about sacrifice, but it's fascinating because 
I have a completely different understanding of sacrifice now. Oh, absolutely. Now Especially that I've, being a guy who's pro uh, fasting every month now. Well, now that I don't I'm, you when you think about that and then you hear things like that, don't you find that fascinating? Well, so here's the thing. I've always believed in it, just didn't understand it. In other words, I've always believed in hard work. I've always believed in uh, you know, not doing what's expedient because you're going to it's going to benefit you later on. You know, I've always been that way. I've always been responsible, right? That's what we used to say, right? You're responsible. Mm. But now I understand uh, even deeper. And, you know, Jordan Peterson talks about that story of Jesus going into the, because he talks about the Bible, not because, not from a, I'm a Christian standpoint, but rather what do these stories actually mean? Mm -hmm. And the way he breaks it down is how really it's about, we all have that good and bad in us, right? The, 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 the line between good and evil runs in everybody's heart is a statement, right? And that we're all capable of doing evil and we're all capable of doing good. And what makes us human is knowing that we can make that choice. And many times what's bad or evil is what's expedient, easy, it's immediate, it's pleasure. And what's good is hard, but it leads to something better later on. And so he talks about that story, how Jesus went out there and was basically, you know, a lot of the stuff he says, right? Like man cannot live on bread alone. In other words, what does that mean? Because that's something that, you know, when, when Satan comes to Jesus and tells him, why don't you just turn these rocks into bread and eat them? And he says that's that line, which is a very, you know, very famous apparently or widely used thing that Scripture, Jesus says. Yeah. yeah. And what it basically means is food means nothing to you if you have a corrupt soul. Mm. And and what that made me think about is in my in, in terms of what we do in, in modern life, because very rarely are we without food, right? But the way I apply it to us is like, you know, money is worth nothing if you have corrupted yourself and you haven't been true to yourself and you haven't, and I, I think of it that way, like if I lie, cheat, steal and become this shitty person in order to get rich and get all this money, mm -hmm. I will be miserable. I will right. be, it will be, it, not only will it not be worth it's it, an it'll empty be existence. It'll be, that's how, it, that's what it took for you to get there. It's right. And, and you see examples of that all the time with celebrities and people who seem to have everything and yet they die of a drug overdose or they commit suicide you know, that's the evidence of that, just that incredible wisdom. So whether you're religious or not, it's very, very true. So that's what they talked about. And for Lent, we, again, not because I'm, you know, I hate having to preface it. It really doesn't matter if I'm Catholic or not. I'm not, but uh, we did all uh, give something up uh, for 40 days because I do believe it's a, it's a good practice to do that. So my mm -hmm. kids gave something up. I gave something up. And Jessica gave something up oh. for Lent. So I gave up. Right. My phone now stays plugged in on uh, in the kitchen. You can't go with me anywhere else in the house. So I no longer am on my phone. Now, when if you, I need to work, I go to it. So I want to talk about when you went in there, did you feel that you had to have a conversation with yourself about, okay, I'm going to go in with an open mind? Or did you catch yourself having tendencies of like seeing something going, oh, and like feeling like you had to eye roll? Or what did you- Nope. None nothing. of that. I used to. Mm -hmm. When I used to go to church because I was, you know, because it was a holiday, it was Easter, or it was a baptism mm -hmm. or a wedding- mm -hmm. I'd sit there and just be like, oh, you know, I, I hate it. Like, look at these sheep and they're all hypocrites and this is all bullshit ritual. And this is what I used to, you know, think. I had no respect for it whatsoever. In fact, I thought it was, uh, I thought there was more bad than good that came from it, which is a common belief a lot of people have that yeah. because it had so much power for so long, it doesn't have as much power nowadays, but um, it had, you know, the 20th century was the, was the century of, uh, of, of governments killing everybody. But before that, it was religion. And I, uh, I, I viewed it that way, but really understanding now that um, it's lasted this long because it is powerful and it has done a lot of good for a lot of people. I know people personally who it's done good for. And uh, I do see how culturally it's extremely important. And scientists will tell you that the concept of an afterlife, the concept of a God probably happens simultaneously with the concept of a future and a past. So in other words, it was a breaking point for human consciousness. So it's just a part of, it has been a part of, of recorded history for as long as we can go back. So I realized just how important and powerful it is. And like anything that's important and powerful, people with bad intentions could get yeah. their hands on it and right. can turn it into something bad. Power corrupts. And people with who are, you know, good can use it for good. So, right. so I went in there with that, with that all. So that was my experience. And w will we be going back? Probably. I think I'm going to go back again. Um, we are, I am reading and watching and learning more in depth about, I'm starting with uh, Christianity and then I'll start learning about the other religions because um, 
what I'm starting to realize, and it's it's uh, it's funny that I'm realizing it now because it's obvious when you think about it. But if you want to learn about human culture and existence and behavior, especially f- from the past till now, there's almost nothing better than studying you know texts that have been used by humans for thousands of years, and even before that, they were borrowed upon texts that were very similar. So I'm going to, I want to try learning about all these things because I think you can learn so much about people, you know, like Buddhism and, Mm. you know, uh, Islam and all, you know, you know, Judaism, all these different religions. It's very fascinating. So, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. What what did Jess think? Or she would, you guys, do you guys? We're both in the same space. Both the same space. Yeah. We're both really into learning about all this stuff right now. So, so I don't know how long it'll last or what that'll turn into. I I don't think I'll become a, you know, evangelical uh, Christian, but I never say never. Who knows what, who knows? I might. See something. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine that? Oh Guys, you don't know what happened yesterday. Sal's going to come in. I want to change the podcast direction yeah. completely. Guys. Yeah. 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 Anyway. <laughs> so I did that. Yeah. And then, yeah. oh, the other thing. Just kidding. Yeah. Here's the other thing I want to tell you guys. Uh, so I come home and uh, Jessica surprised me with an entire... Uh, Encyclopedia Britannica set from the from 1951. <laughs> such a dork. From ni- no, You're such a dork. Hold on a second. Uh, Hold on a second. Was it the, the same one you used like no, in your no, no. room? No, the one yeah. I had was from 80. The one I used to read was 1986. So this was 1951. And for, am I going to read these? Probably not. Maybe I'll look into them because I want to see how much information's changed. But they're so decorative. Like yeah. we have them, no, above, we look, have them in a bookshelf. Oh, it was and they, cool having those. I had a set. Yeah, they, I just like the day. way they yeah. look. I'm probably not even gonna look in them, right? We have the internet, but they look so cool. Yeah, and she's like nostalgia, bro. I told her, I'm like, these are collectors. I'm like, what? I thought they were worth a lot of money. She got the whole set for forty bucks. Oh yeah. She's like on Craigslist, you could buy as many. So as you, want. you had it also, Justin. Mm-hmm. So did you have World Book and Childcraft? Yeah. Uh-huh. So that's what when this guy always talks about reading encyclopedias when he's little. That's what he's talking about. I'm like, yeah. oh shit, I didn't know that's what you were talking about all these times. Yeah, I did that too. Well, I just thought you meant you opened up the encyclopedia and you started reading it. Where ch- the childcraft style of it was different. It was written in like stories to kids. Uh, well, that's what I did when I was little, and then as I got older, yeah, well, when I, I was like when I was like thirteen, Britannica fourteen, too. yeah, when I was thirteen, fourteen, I was reading Encyclopedia Britannica with the really thin paper. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I was pages, really yeah. into it because yeah, you you get all the definitions and you get like pictures and everything else mm-hmm. to kind of help to describe the whole thing. So that really it helps me learn if I have visual alongside. No, it No, the first so. ones I read were my mom bought me. What do you think has been replaced now? Like, what do you guys do for your kids? Like, because that, that was something that was staple at our it's, house. It's was, YouTube now. Yeah, no, it's like it's YouTube now. So wow. my so so what I started reading was Snoopy's Encyclopedia, which was a small <clears> one when I was a little kid. And then I went to what you're talking about, where it's more for kids. Yeah. Over, and then I started reading Encyclopedia Britannica. And I didn't read page to page. I would go, or cover to cover. I would go through, and if I saw a subject I was interested in, I would read right. about it. But no, my my kids will get on YouTube sometimes, and they'll go on uh, the TED Talks. Mm-hmm. They have uh, TED for kids. And they'll just, I mean, literally sit there for two or three hours watching these 15 to 30 minute videos on all I'm, kinds of like things. sharks I'm and all so, that yeah. kids do all the time. I'm so interested in the future of TED Talks. Like I just feel like they're they're building this library library of freaking amazing fucking uh, it, information that people Isn't are that great? Oh dude, it's kidding. I mean, almost every time I search something now, it's one of the one of the top 3. Well, uh, I just like that they get to the meat of it. And it's not a whole lot of fluff, you know, like they're condensed to this mm-hmm. short amount of time. So they really have to prepare ahead of time about like what information they're going to convey. And, and it it's great, man, because as a consumer, it's like, OK, like you, dude, you, you get a great understanding in a short amount of time. Dude, it's funny because we had that a uh, few episodes ago where we talked about school voucher system. And there's a couple teachers in our forum and they were like a little upset, like, no, it's terrible. And. You know, I know the school system, and you know, we were debating back and forth. It was a good discussion. I actually really appreciated it. If you're listening right now, I really appreciate it if you disagree and we have a good discussion. I like that. But a point that I made, which I think is for sure, is it. I don't think, I think the way we do education now, you know, publicly funded, whatever, doesn't even fucking matter. You can try doing whatever you want. Hmm. the The way information is being shared now, it, it, you can throw. It's all going to be well, yeah. it's all accessible. Twenty years from now, it ain't going to look like that at how all. How can you not see? Well, I could see if you're in it. How you don't see that? I well, could see you if think you're, you yeah. can control it. Yeah. Like good, you can't control it now. Like the, right now, right now, if I wanted to, literally, I could access lectures from Harvard, Stanford, mm-hmm. wherever. I could watch. 
you know, uh, sh- shows or stuff on surgery, you know, on, um, you know, anatomy, on medicine. If I really had the motivation and the passion for it, I could learn everything a private university student would learn. I could learn you it could all. You could learn how to replace your transmission in your van, you know, yep. like yourself, yep. just by watching. It's crazy. I, like they have everything. I, and as the, as the cost of school keeps going up and gets crazier and crazier, this is just going to outcompete it because it's free and it's right there. Well, and you see, we just talked about, uh, uh, what's his face? Warren Buffett's company and, and who was it? Was it Apple or Google were partnering up to start their university? See, team? it's already happening. Yeah, it's already happening. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's inevitable. It, it makes it's it's going sense. that direction. I thought we were just kind of exploring Exploring the idea of the voucher, where I was. Yeah, that's what it was. But uh, even that, like at right. that point, it, yeah. it, that won't even matter. No, because it'll right. be so cheap and so free yeah, that it's not even. That'll flip it on its head, no matter yeah. what. No, so, crazy. you guys ready for some uh, for the daily pump? Oh, oh let's, let's get in the daily pump. pump. Daily pump. All right, uh, Justin, did you say you had some news first, or you want me to go first? Here? Um, yeah, because I got. No, I do have some. I basically, what I found was uh, this guy. In uh, India, he had came up with this brilliant idea, this farmer, to put a massive poster of a porn star in his field uh, to keep his crops safe. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> oh, why? I'm, so that, like, safe? I'm trying to, yeah, like, so. Whoa, back up. Hold on. The, okay, some, there, some... there's mysticism in India, right? There's like, um, they, they have a lot of superstitions and things. Oh, and like you don't want to go near a nude photo, photo like that? Well, it's more like negative eyes. Like, it's so he thought that, like, by bringing, like, this porn star, like, this, it would bring a lot of positive, you know, energy to his crops. <laughs> And so apparently it's worked, and his well, his, yeah, the, his cucum- crops are the cucumbers are massive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, I, you uh, don't know how long I've been holding that joke. I know, I know. I set you up so I've been perfectly. Waiting for finally, so, what a that is. Hilarious. Isn't that funny though? I wonder what it's his wife like, thinks. I don't know. Like everybody's walking by, and it's it's this girl, this porn star with a bikini, like a red bikini on, and everything. It's just like you know, people just walk by and like look at it all I, funny. I feel like he lied to his this wife. This isn't. India? Exactly, yeah, this in India. In uh, India? Uh, yeah, he lied to his wife. Totally. <laughs> you know what I mean? His wife's like, you know. He's like, why are you always taking off? She's like, middle of the night out into the, yeah. you know, the field. She's like, Gurdeep, you're jerking off all the time. <laughs> no, it's for the freaking Listen, I'm warding crops. off the demons. <laughs> okay? Yeah. It's for the ro- crops. Keep making the roti bread. I'll be uh, right back. Uh, I have to go my fertilize. Brussels sprouts are growing huge. I have to go fertilize. Oh, shit. There's a picture of it right there. <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, That's awesome. Uh, well, uh, hey, I can't. I can't. I, I mean, can't, you can't deny it. Exactly. Like the logic behind it I is sound. Ve- vegetation growing uh, at the moment. Oh so anyway, God. So that's great. That, yeah, God. I thought that was major so, news. are you guys watching the Olympics at all? No. Yeah. I watched the All-Star game that was on last oh, night. But see, I, I don't, my son, oh, this is great. My son is so into snowboarding now because of the Olympics. Really? Oh, Sean White. Yeah, he, he wants to be Sean White. So, so Sean White in it again? Is he destroying it? Oh, yeah. He got a gold, yeah. Is he like one of the greatest Olympians of all time, or is it just for that? He's up uh, there. Yeah, he's got to be up there with gold medals because I, I mean, shit, he got into it when he was like, yeah, like he was seventeen, a, or yeah, something, maybe. Because I, I know what's 18. his name is uh, Michael Phelps won more gold medals than anybody. He's ridiculous, dude. Right? He's, he's, I but mean, I wonder where Sean White neck is, is going to break because I know Sean is. White has destroyed. Uh, he might be up there actually. Yeah, I mean Sean White's been getting him for a mi- hot minute, dude. No, yeah. Interesting. If he doesn't get one, it's like a, what? Interesting. Remember, he started his little skateboarder. Remember, he was yeah. right, he's right out. Yeah. He was right around the Tony Hawk generation, mm-hmm. and he's been he's been right. He's, and then he transitioned into snowboarding afterwards. I wonder. You know fit. what? This makes me think now. When you're doing those kind of extreme, Doug, does, do those extreme events when you're doing your health, your life insurance? Because we're sponsored by Health IQ. Made me think of this. Life insurance is more expensive. Oh, bro! If you are a pro snowboarder or a pro like skateboarder, hundred percent. You. Oh, yeah. but I had somebody DM me. That, remember the cigarette thing I said the other day? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. someone DM me and actually ran ran what it was like. If you were somebody who was smoking and what it, it was double the amount of wow. money. Of course, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you Major participate in high risk activity, they may rate your policy or increase your rates. You're wow, like, I have a lot of But you know, snowboarding sex. is typically not one of the questions. You know, it's like do you hang glide? Do you parachute? So the specific you, ones. There yeah, there's sp- specific ones. So do technically on the application if you're a professional snowboarder, you could answer no to the high risk question. Cool. Well, you know, typically. well, health health IQ, they got There the, you go, Sean. The, look at that. Sean White, yeah. you can get health IQ. <laughs> yeah, they're for fit people, <laughs> life insurance deal. for fit people. So the Olympics, let's get back to that, right? So yeah. French ice dancer Gabriela Papadakis. 
She sounds like she's oh, like she sounds name. like she's Greek. Papadakis. Yeah, Papadakis. That's Greek. That's not French. Anyway, she's French. And she had a nightmare wardrobe malfunction oh. during her routine. Like on live TV? While she's dancing with her partner, her uh her dance figure skating uh, outfit or whatever, um, the clasp broke and she was uh Bo- booby out. Oh, a Janet Jackson. Wow. But, she but, Janet Jackson does. But it's live TV, because it's live, right? Mm-hmm. And she had to finish the dance, so she's still doing this. What a champion. Yeah, cold nipple and everything, because it's on oh, the ice. Oh, <laughs> so, oh. so probably- I'm sure everybody stood up in, in roaring applause. I'm really mad I didn't see this event, yeah, because that would have been interesting. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how she did. Interesting. Yeah. God, you know, talk about the focus you have to have when you're at that level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every four years. I always feel bad because when they do one of those like crazy huge triple axle things and then they eat shit and then they got to get up and do the entire, especially if they do it early and they have to finish their entire routine. You're just like, oh. what, are, what would you do? You're not going to get any so here's points. A, so here's the thing. This is a little sexism, right? Let's talk about this for a second. Totally. Would they have done the same thing if the guy's dick came out? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they probably would have gone to commercial. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Would they have like, stopped oh, it? No. Like, boob, yeah. boob comes yeah. out. They're like, eh. Yeah. Sponsored by well, you Franks. Can't, I don't know. I don't know if you're allowed to compare boob to dick, though. Yeah. I think you can only you can only make the boob vagina. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. right. Like yeah. boob vagina. I mean, vagina penis connection, but you can't make the which one's it'd worse? Be more like butt. Yeah. Which one's worse? Yeah. Vagina wardrobe malfunction or or dick wardrobe malfunction? Dick because there's something hanging out. That's well, dick. why. Yeah, especially if you flop. The vagina's pretty. Yeah, I mean, especially so, if you're jumping. Especially if you're yeah, exactly you're on the ice and you're, you're <laughs> Dude, spinning. <it> spins. <laughs> 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 it's all stretching out. You're doing your triple axle and you get the whoosh. <laughs> yeah. hit, hitting your partner. Helicopter. Uh, anyway, so that, that happened there. That would be bad. So there's a, there's something to watch the Olympi- Olympics for. Winter uh, Olympics is boring. You're selling it. You are selling it. Winter Olympics second. are boring. Do you know- Dude, you, the skeleton. Have you guys seen the skeleton? No, what's that? It's like the the it's like it's, luge and like the bobsled, but it's like it's, it's a dangerous. one man. You basically have this tiny ass little sled that you lay on, yeah, it's and, you, and you not only you, you don't lay backwards, you, you go lay face first. first. Yeah. It looks like a fucking like a go, neck injury, and, and you go <laughs> hella fast. I, I I literally like if you make one wrong decision, you're, you're dead. dead. You're dead. Why do they call it the skeleton? I probably, probably something have to do with that. <laughs> oh my god, what are the okay? I would love to look and see how many people that um are in the Olympics that actually go on to do big things or how many of them end up broke uh, and no one ever heard of who they were? Well, that, so, like, what are the numbers on that? So I feel like it's it, there's not a lot. If you win a gold... Right, yeah. If, if you win gold in a popular event, then your odds of doing really... Like, if you're a gold medalist... And you're like, look like a model. Yeah. Well, you're yeah. Do well. There's, a lot, if, there's some of those. But if you're gold in like... first, So two things. If you're gold in a sport that's also professional, very good because you got a lot of commercial appeal. If you're gold in a popular sport like figure skating, so if you're a gold medalist in figure skating, that's a popular sport. Yeah, well, for Winter Olympics, it's one of the most popular. Oh, I mean, oh, so you can. I'm thinking popular in general, like year round. Well, saying. so what's popular about it is when you're a figure skater gold medalist, you tend to be one of the athletes that is that everybody you know that's displayed for the Winter Olympics, and then you do these tours. You see these like you know Olympians on the ice or whatever, and you do lots of interviews, and because people really like that. Like if you're First, you know, gold medalist in, you know, I don't know, what's what's an obscure winter sport? Curling. Yeah, Curling. You oh, that, well, you'll make money in Canada if you're a gold medalist. I think that's the second most popular sport in Canada, if I'm not mistaken. Is it really? Yeah. Curling is really popular. I just there. threw that out of nowhere. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <It's not laughs> I thought that was a great curveball yeah. for you. But you, but you what's know- the, What's the one where they, they ski, they shoot, and they- uh, Oh, yeah. It's like a cross-country ski. Yeah, and ski shooting. Shoot. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I saw my guy. I got the gold medal in ski shooting. <laughs> I, I So I think if it's not a popular sport, like if you're a gold medalist in like, I don't know, Taekwondo or something- you know, in the Summer Olympics, you're not going to be on national TV or anything but like that. But even then, like, okay, so so what? National TV that gives you all this exposure and you go on tour and so you sell out some tickets and so you make a million dollars your next year, but then what? You can become one of the most sought after coaches. You could you could become I think that's the move. You most can of them get turn into coaches. You could get sponsored in their own gym or whatever. Yeah, you can get sponsored by supplement companies or food Do you know companies what the, do, you have, do you even have an idea what the no, rate is though? But, is that like half of them? But think of some most of, the, of them. Think of some of the highest paid ones like Michael Phelps made a shit ton of money. Well, okay, that's a yeah, very so can't, yeah. Mary Lou Retton made yeah. a shit ton of money. Remember her? She was on the the cover of uh, Wheaties and all that stuff. Yeah, um, she wasn't the one that cut off the subway right for the marathon race. Remember no, that one? Remember no, that? you remember when that happened? No. Do you remember that was like in the fuck? When was that? I want to say that was in the eighties, or was it? Bef- no, it might have been before the eighties. Even 
that's on one of those old ESPN classics where the 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 marathon runner that set the the set the world record, like they found out like years oh, later. Oh, took the subway. Yeah, she took the subway. <laughs> Oh my! God. You didn't know that story? No, it's hilarious. Oh yeah, I got I got to look it up now. So I'm sure one of our four members will know that's into sports. Like, that's so funny. I've heard of people doing that. Yeah, like, like they hide and then they wait and then they just like cut yeah, through the, the crowd. Hopped on the hopped on if, the. If you could be a gold medalist uh, in any event in the Olympics, what would it be? Like winter or summer? Doesn't matter. Yeah. Any event. Like, what would you want to be gold medal in? Well, basketball, dude. I don't want to be well, now this doesn't mean you're going to be in the NBA and all that. So forget all that. Just I'll imagine say, you I'll just get a medal, oh, like a solo thing, like just a medal. Yeah, what yeah. would you want, dude? Boxing, would be awesome. snowboarding is pretty dope. Snowboarding, snowboarding yeah, is half, awesome the half pipe too. would be pretty. Dope. I know what you're thinking, Adam. You're thinking which gold medal is worth the most <laughs> yeah. attention from from women. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is not what I was thinking. That's why you laughed. Me, that's right. You laughed before I even <laughs> said it because you knew yeah. exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> let me get. Hold on. Uh, I know you, bro. Let me put it this way. I bet the look at what instrument did you think about playing when you were a kid? <laughs> saxophone. saxophone. <laughs> the only reason why you picked that, like chicks dig it. Yeah, you're like this is the coolest one. <laughs> chicks are gonna what a dumb idea, right? <laughs> Bill Clinton got some. Oh, you gotta think. I thought it was that. such a good idea too back then when you were a kid. <laughs> you know, how many things did you think were such a good idea yeah. that, you, that was the dumbest thing I Just ever did? Just always playing Careless Whisper. <laughs> All, all over the place. Yeah. I remember. You want to talk about bad ideas? I watched a movie called The Bronx Tale. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, movie? great movie. Great movie, right? And there's the there's the test that that guy does where you get out of the car and you uh, walk around the other side to open the door for your girl, but you see if she unlocks the door for you, yeah, yeah. or not. And I tried doing that, but I forgot my car. You know, by this point, cars are automatic, so all the locks open. So I walked around. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> That was stupid. It didn't work out. <laughs> nope. that, that's what I did. That was dumb. Hmm. Um, more news. So you guys heard about the all the news about the investigation into Russia meddling in our election. Ooh, Remember that? You guys hear about that? That's never died. Uh, have well, we figured that out yet? They were trying to say there was collusion between Trump and the Russians. And, right, uh, and the right, Re- right. And which is so big conspiracy. F- fucking stupid because uh, like Russia, right? Old Russia. It's, it's our Cold War enemies. And so it just sounds so scary. Um, well, what they found actually was they did find that Russia tried to uh, fuck with the election, but it wasn't in support of anybody. They don't give a fuck who wins. They're just, they had a bunch of trolls. They had 13 of them who got indicted. 13 trolls who got indicted for posting f- articles and stuff on social media trying to, you know, make Americans lose their, uh, their, their, trust or whatever in the process the electoral process which i hate to break this to you it's already going away we don't need russia to whatever how funny is that though so there's a troll factory apparently in russia and that's what they do they hire in st petersburg they hire these kids booming business and they pay them a lot of money and their goal is to go on social media and stir up some shit wow but you know what though is this surprising (laughs) no it's not surprising you don't think we do the same shit tactic of course we do the same thing yeah i guarantee you we have a whole room of kids doing that shit for every other country is julian assange still over there in julian yeah julian 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 Julian. he's uh no he's where is he i forgot where he's at no he's not in russia anymore okay yeah no i just i remember that they had that as they're trying to tie him into the whole um, you know, with the WikiLeaks and everything else going on with no. the election. So. No, no, no. Actually, what's funny about that, so WikiLeaks, which is crazy, right? They they provo- they they leak out some crazy hacked information. They are nonpartisan. I mean, they were doing stuff with Bush. They were revealing a shit ton of stuff with Bush. And then Obama. And, na- and then they were doing it with the Democratic National Convention, how Hillary's campaign undermined Bernie Sanders and all this other stuff and all those email leaks. Right. Didn't and some guy get whacked? Uh, well, nobody knows how that well, happened. We don't need to speculate. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I'm scared, dude, of these people. So, <laughs> okay. so what, they, what, they, uh, uh, what they were trying to say is uh, somebody was like, why aren't you releasing stuff on Trump? And he tweeted out, this is Julian Assange, t- tweeted out, I would if I could find anything on, on him. Trust me, I've tried. There's nothing. What? Crazy, right? So he's mm. like, I can't find anything on Trump that we can leak or whatever. 
So really? believe believe that or not. Weird. You know what I mean? If either he's telling the truth yeah. or he's uh, helping them. I don't, trust, helping. I don't trust anybody. I know. Yeah. Yeah, Everybody's got dirt on them. Fucking Whatever. all of them yeah. do. Crazy. All right, one more one more piece of news for damn. The, for you, the gotta, you always come with a bunch. What oh, are you man. reading right now? I just <clears throat> I just don't forget shit. Like check this out. This is now this is an important piece of news. This is uh, this might take a long time to discuss. Uh, so this happened recently. A flight from Dubai to Amsterdam. This is recent. Had to make an emergency landing in Vienna after a fight broke out. So big fight on the plane, right? Everybody's getting pissed off and throwing fists because. One of the passengers would not stop farting. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently, on February 11th, uh, two men sitting next to uh, a very uh, flatulent man <laughs> got really pissed off. Apparently, this guy just was farting terribly. Wow, and that's a that's a pretty long flight, right? Dubai to Amsterdam, <laughs> like like the whole time. I might, yeah, I might whoop someone's ass. Yeah, that yeah. so and they were like, like tell- what's your limit? Five? Yeah, they kept telling yeah, him. How many? He just farts- sounds like a motorbike, you know, the whole time. Just <laughs> apparently they were telling him like stop fucking farting, and yeah. the dude just like you know he didn't yeah. care, <laughs> and so they got in a fight, dude, on the plane. <laughs> on the plane. <laughs> Could you imagine everybody on the plane that was rooting for the guy, too. Fo- rooting for the guy who was punching him? Right for uh, sure. Well, I mean, here's the thing: like, yeah. if you get your ass kicked Suck for farting, back in. is that embarrassing or is that cool? Like, if someone's like, "Dude, why why did you get jumped?" You'd be like, Dude. "I was farting." Well, you know, it, dropping bombs. You know, if it got that serious, that it was plane. probably where he's probably sick, right? Well, I no, him. I would guess that it was some guy probably said something, and then it's some some other guy who's going to be have a chip on his shoulder and be like, "Oh, now I'm going to intentionally keep farting." And then yeah. he probably made it. Yeah, a, yeah, he yeah, probably yeah. made it a mission to fart as much as he could. Probably, the, you know what I'm saying? Because that's <laughs> the only, that's use it. the blankets. Dude, but like, like, how can you keep farting? Like, he must have had that technique where he could suck it in. You know what I mean? And then like blast it back out. There's a technique. There is, dude. Swear to my, God, I, I would throw my brother under the bus, but he had a master, dude. <laughs> he can fart whenever you he can wants. Suck it in, and it makes almost as much noise as it does. Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah, I know people can do yeah. this. He dude. can it's draw I, in air to his butthole. Is, and this was the most funny, like the most funny thing. He would kill me if he he heard this, but. He would use those powers, and we had like a little trumpet that was on, <laughs> on, the, on the, it was on the uh, uh, the table, you know, in the living room, and it was just for decoration. And he would grab it every now and then, suck it, and he'd blast it out. We would die laughing, right? And then this Wait, he'd neighbor fart kid, in the trumpet. Yeah, he'd fart in the trumpet and make noise. Do you know how much like wind you have to have? Like to, he to had blow some ferocity. Tr- yeah, that's you know a, what I mean. That's talent. It was very talented. And then, he could go somewhere with the that. The worst thing is my one of my neighbors, like the, at the time the kid came over and just went, oh, look, and grabs it and starts like blowing on it. And we were dying, you know, because I'm like, you don't know where that's been. He got friend. herpes. Yeah. He got the stink lip. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's crazy. So you can actually suck in air. Yeah. God, if I had I that I bet you show, could find that on YouTube. Can I, can I'm I sure just, somebody could do it. Can I just say something? As a grown man hearing that, I'm like, that's cool. Yeah. As a kid, I would have been so jealous. Yeah. Like, how awesome do you, do you think that would have been if you could have farted on demand as a young about, boy? Yeah. So that's I feel like that's this case right here. I feel like that's right? like somebody he who must has have those powers has somebody who has that. And I because I've known people that have that that same skill set too. Not to that level they can <laughs> blow a trumpet. <laughs> Blowing a trumpet's another level. Uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> still impressed to this day. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, impressive. I actually yeah. I kind of want to see it to be honest with you. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Call your brother. You'll <laughs> never do it. Dude. <laughs> well, let's put him on. Can, well, can let's we, like film it in the corner. Can we not please tell for our audience? Can we please give him like a random phone call? sometime oh, yeah. and ask and put them on live air and just don't like, tell them yeah, yeah yeah don't tell them just call them up and be we like should. hey bro i'm just talking to the guys they really want to see you fart in a trumpet can yeah. you do that i'll again? challenge yeah. them can you like, still do it i'm like you can't do it we bro. should offer him some money or something I don't sure, sure. Put, put it on the youtube channel. i'd pay for that yeah, yeah i'd pay for that i'd pay for that <laughs> <laughs> we got we got people trying to work for us but a little th- bit of an embarrassment but you know you get paid don't you think i don't you think that's what happened here though it's probably some asshole like that who has this ability <laughs> literally yeah some asshole has this ability i think volatile asshole well well, I mean, to be honest, okay, I remember when I used to eat, you know, like a bodybuilder because I thought that was the right way to eat. Oh, how gassy you were. Well, it wasn't just gassy. Like, my farts were- Oh, they clear the room. They were terrible. Yeah. yeah. They were like so bad that um, I'm pretty sure it played where a role. Were we, where were we with Craig when Craig- Oh, <laughs> my God, dude. Another oh, I threw my boy in the bus. Uh, oh, we were at the suite. It we was were in the, so bad. We were in the, we cleared the suite out, dude. <laughs> 
<laughs> he tried to warn us. Like he did. He's like, cool. hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't know, had a lot man. of protein today. Too. That was when we were watching the the uh, WWE. Yeah, oh, that's what that's that was. What it was yeah. Oh, I forgot Krager came with yeah, us. He for came that. with us. Oh. It's, uh, yeah, it's terrible. You know, he cleared you- the whole box. Yeah, your farts are not supposed to smell that bad, <laughs> bro. I thought that was normal. We knew it was protein related too. Yeah, because you know you just, just you just don't get them otherwise. Yours are getting better. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's. Come on, man. There's some. I mean, you got some. Some. Yeah, some room to go. But it's not as Dude, bad. What are you as talking well. about? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any. Hey, he's he's that, turning into that. the phantom shitter, bro. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's did you think that's me? Did he crush? Did he crush? I crushed. I in crushed. LA? Yeah, yeah we're I in did LA. crush our room in LA. Yeah, did. Oh, did you tell him about that? <laughs> you fucker. So uh, I guess you did. I come back. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, bro. Uh, I come. We back. didn't have a plunger. What do you want from <laughs> I, I, me, dude? So I come back in the room. Listen to this. So we had. So oh, we did we tell our audience what happened? We no. did, didn't we? Oh no, that we got the, the weird a house. porn house. Yeah, no, we didn't share. Oh, that. we didn't say any of that. I can't stuff. believe we didn't well, even well, mention so that. Well, so tell your story first, and then, yeah. or maybe we'll tell the house story. Well, yeah, you got to tell the so house. So we get we get to LA. We have an Airbnb, and it was a last minute house because it was what all all star weekend. Yeah, and they're like, well, normally we don't rent it out for people to sleep here because it's used just for filming. So we're like, huh? So we get there and it's weird. Like there's like cables coming out of the wall. Yeah. Master bedroom had a bed in the Remember, middle of the floor. Remember, this is like a $5 million house. $5 million house. Yeah. The bed had no sheets or anything on it. Upstairs was locked, but it the lights locked. were on. So something was up there. And there was weed on the counter. Like ground up weed on the counter. Not I, like a little bit. It was like a, a decent amount. I feel like, oh, yeah. I feel like it was yeah, a it was porn like, that they filmed there yeah. and that we had to leave. Afterwards, so then we got a hotel room, and then this is when this happened. Yeah, so Purple then we get so table. then we had to get three hotel rooms, right? So we're all we're all bunked up in each one. So Justin and I are together, and I don't remember where did we go that day, Justin? Oh, that's when we went different ways, right? Yeah, we went different ways, and I come back in the room late in the night. Oh, I crushed it, and the toilet is just <laughs> painted, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> fucking painted. <laughs> and I you go, would have seen the size of it. You'd have been, you, it all made sense. And I go, I go, you know what I mean? I go, what? Justin, what the fuck happened in the bathroom, right? He uh. goes... He goes, oh, dude. He says, I had a big scare. A big scare. <laughs> I was hoping it was going to go yeah. down. Yeah. He goes, oh, my God. Yes, dude. He goes, yeah. it wouldn't go down? And that's what he said. Well, yeah, you know. It, it looks like you had to break it up, dude, yeah. just to go. Yeah. I've had some of those. Did you have to put your hand in there? No. <laughs> no, man. It's, I just flushed it a couple times. It went down. <laughs> you had to add a little. Yeah. Use the coat hanger trick. Uh, that's what I, we listen, do. I, I, to- I totally had to sell them out. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, like if um, I'm flying, I'm traveling, you know, I'm holding on to it. So <laughs> and then it all comes out at once. So. Doug, you know what? I, so what do you want from me? Because you guys usually room together, and then I usually room with Doug. And <clears throat> yes, Doug, because we are in the same Arctic Doug polar. Doug sleeps like a little baby. No, dude. no. Mm-hmm. Doug never poops. <laughs> while we're while we're somewhere, he gets well, backed up. Doug. So I'm the one that dominates the toilet in there. So I apologize. To you Doug. always dominate yeah, the toilet. Yeah, yeah. Where did we go this time? You shit oh, everywhere. Can we talk about Doug shitting at Christina's? Oh house? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We oh, was it Doug this so, time? Because no, last time it was so this Sal is, this at, is at the even, other podcast. This is even was more there. epic. So we get, uh, okay, so Christina is the, we're on yeah, we're the interview number the six, right? We're And we roll up to, we've already been here before. So Sal and I have already been to our place. We get there. And she's got a, a just a small uh, um, apartment. Yeah, studio. Yeah. So we're, we're sitting in the in the you know living room, dining room type area, podcasting, and Doug's there too. And when we first got, came in the door, <laughs> Sal made a joke because she, she was li- she listens to all the episodes. I'm sure she's going to hear this too. This is going to be great. So <laughs> <laughs> she's going to know. So so Sal Sal made a joke about uh, wanting to use her bathroom real quick, like you know, because she made the comment about shitting right away. Like she goes, "Make sure you go to the bathroom before you get here." Type yeah, of deal. Yeah. So then Sal goes, "Oh, I got to go take a shit real quick," and she's like, nah, "And there were, it was a joke, <laughs> she's right?" Like no. So when we sit down. That was like when we first walk in. We sit down. We're podcasting. Well, Doug disappears like for 20, 30 minutes into the podcast, dude. <laughs> and, and actually, we really didn't even notice anything because we were going in the podcast. Uh, and we leave, and Doug's like, I almost, I fucking, ninja he's shitty. like, I plugged the toilet in there. No. Like, yeah, he took a big oh, no. shit. He took a big shit in there, and he plugged the toilet, and he's <laughs> in there working it out. Sorry, Christina. <laughs> but he, he I fixed, fixed it. it. I fixed it. He plunged it out. Uh, yeah, he, he plunged it out. So he, well, he plunged God, it. God, we've all been there. He plunged it out. He had to pull it out because it wouldn't go down, and he, but he stuffed it down the shower. <laughs> A drain. So everything's okay Not now, true. Christina. Dear Lord. That's, it's okay now, Christina. Oh, that's Don't worry. He pushed it down the drain. You're fine. Oh, God, right, dude. Sorry. I died, though, when, she, when Doug said that.
said that. I thought, oh, that's uh, hilarious because we were joking. It's all the long. worst place to poop is a girl's house. Everybody knows yeah, that. Yeah, you can't. Like, I don't like yeah, pooping at girls' house. That's that, that's just terrible. I don't. I try and I try and time all my poops at my own house. Yeah, that's a th- like I, I don't. What like, are you doing? When we're gone. Well, hotel rooms are okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Hot- sure. I, we stay in nice. You dropped places. a deuce over at a uh, uh, culture cast, didn't you? <laughs> No. You sure? No, I promise. Come on, okay. man. All right. No, all right. we're, that, we're all just dropping that, that's everywhere. A, that's, a, <laughs> that's, a, huh? that's our mission. Yeah. Our mission is to just, that's how we mark our territory. Yeah, we you know what I mean? Well, I'm that's claim we our space. I'm very careful. We've had some bad experiences in the past where we the, when Justin and I went used to go down on the pizza, right? But we haven't done that in a long time. Uh, yeah, good. I'm, I'm actually good. very proud. Yeah, we've been eating good. I'm very proud of our traveling uh, I'm a closer. diet. And <laughs> We have. We've gotten to the point where we 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 either fast, right, or we eat lots of vegetables, yeah. and proteins. Yeah, proteins. no, it's we've been we've been really solid when we travel, Good. and you know it's been. I, I can tell a big difference too. Like my stomach feels a million times, uh, better. and you're less tired oh, yeah. when you get back, right? Definitely. And and I I do notice right? that the interviews we tend to do better too. So that's that's the main thing that yeah, performance wise, yeah, thank you. that's why I'm on board. Thank you. you we're going to perform well. You got to be in good health. So well, I think if we do the Brussels sprouts pretty religiously. Eggs and bacon, and then green juice. Those Avocado. three. Avocado. Those three things is what we serve. Organifi green juice has become a travel yeah. staple. It's well, just they, nice to have with you. Well, staple. They, they make the ones too. They, that's what I. I'm so glad the they single sit, serve. Yeah, this is the, I keep one at my house, and then I keep a, a, a handful of those yep. the single serve tear ones. Those fit in my bag perfect. It's um. You know what? I've been I've been using it long enough now. The green juice that I if I'm going to eat a meal without vegetables or that's kind of iffy. If I throw in the green juice, it does make a difference on my digestion. It really does. Yep. So they did a good job with that. So good job, guys. Queen Queen Chimera Quad. Today's Quad is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking qua. The eagle has landed. Quee-qua. First question is from Jack K. I'm trying to help out my roommate with his overall health and wellness. He needs work on his sleep schedule. Any advice? I feel like when you say his name, it's like Jack K. Um, K? Okay. Uh, let's see here. Jack and K. You know what's funny? I it's not funny. We've talked about this before. It it's crazy how important sleep is to overall performance, strength, fat loss, health. <laughs> it's crazy to me because I didn't realize it until more recently. Mm-hmm. Like when I was and this doesn't mean that you don't need to focus on this in your 20s. What I'm realizing now is I did what I did in my 20s in spite of the fact Right that I didn't do this stuff. And I can only imagine, yeah. had I focused on sleep, how fucking awesome I would have been. Because it because now that I'm more aware and I just pay attention more... As a young man, it was like a badge of honor not to sleep. So dumb. Yeah. It was. So it, dumb. It really was. I mean, that was... I remember talking shit to each other if you had to go to bed or sleep. When you're dead. I mean, it, forever it was like that. It was, I didn't, And I didn't really feel the difference until I got into my 30s. Yeah. Well, I, I, that's, that's I, the thing. I wonder if we, did, we think no, we didn't I, feel it. No, I agree with you, you right? Like you're just, you're at that age, and, and everyone knows it, Plus right? Plus you're drinking speed stacks all day. <laughs> yes. On top of it, you know? Because yeah, no. I remember, um, you know, I do closeouts. So when I would, you know, when, uh, when we'd run clubs, we'd have these closeouts, end of month closeouts, which are big. And I would usually get in average on a closeout 6 a.m so i'd get there real early sometimes earlier and then i'd stay till the books till we had to keep the books open or at least excuse me till we were forced to close them which later on became 10 uh, 10 p.m but early on in my career they let us keep the books open till midnight, midnight. Mm-hmm. so i'd be there from 6 a.m to 10 p.m at least sometimes till midnight and then the next day is a day of work and i'd go to work the next day <clears throat> and i remember that i would always notice a drop in performance the next day like i'm kind of like a zombie but I, you know, I used to push myself a lot like that when I was a young kid, and I did okay in spite of it. But I can't even imagine how good I would have performed on everything had I focused on sleep. <laughs> sleep is up there with food and water in terms mm-hmm. of you know importance of health, um, literally total health. So I'm talking about risk of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, uh, and if you're just focused on aesthetic goals, fat loss and muscle building. Will poor sleep affect your ability to build muscle and adapt? massively incredibly yeah. so 
It's very, very important. But there's two parts of sleep that we need to, uh, there's two parts that we need to understand about sleep. One is sleep quantity and then the other sleep quality. And they're both very important. I think sometimes people think sleep quantity is the only thing that's important. You know what I mean? So when I talk to people about their sleep and I ask them, how do you sleep? They'll say, oh, it's fine. I, you know, I get about eight hours at night. But then when I start digging deeper, like, oh, I wake up two or three times a night and you know, I can't go, I wake up, yeah, I can't go back to sleep. There, the I think people's sleep patterns look a lot like a lot of people's eating patterns with the binge and purge. I think mm-hmm. a lot of people burn the candle at both ends and then they sleep really hard one day. They sleep all the way in on the Saturday. And mm-hmm. I would argue that that's probably one of the worst things that we could do. And I think that because they get that rest, they think they're doing okay. Just like the whole binging and purging of eating, you know, you go overeat like crazy, then you starve your body, something like that. And I think, I mean, I'm speculating that it's probably as bad. I would assume it is. You're right. Yeah. I, yeah there, so there's actually some studies on this to show how it's called sleep debt, where you lose sleep. Like, let's say you like, uh, you know, you, you, cram real hard for three days in a row. So then you're like, I'll sleep in Saturday. Right. Mm-hmm. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to make up for it and they call it sleep debt. Studies show that one day of sleeping a lot does a little bit, but not much. There's very little to, to help you in terms of your health and your, your cognitive ability, or at least, you know, to, to bring back the decline that you get from lack of sleep. The way they say you should make up for sleep is not to do one crazy long sleep session unless you you can't wake up and so whatever. What they say is to to add an extra hour of sleep every night instead. Mm -hmm. So if I went, you know, two or three nights, five hours a night, and I'm just grinding, then the next, you know, four or five nights, I add an hour. Of quality sleep. Which nobody's doing that. Nobody's doing that. Nobody's spreading it out like that. Yeah, and even as a kid too. I mean, it's like you, you kind of go through the process of like, uh, like I want to stay up all night and, you know, I'll be able to make up for it or, you know, I can, I can train real hard and then, you know, I'll just, I'll, I'll recover. And like, that's just the mentality. Whereas like, you know, there's a way to make all this effortless, like this, this health, this, um, you know, performance and, you know, whatever drives you as far as your fitness goal is concerned, like sleep's one of those things. If you incorporate <clears throat> you know, a quality sleep, it's just going to make things a lot more effortless. And, you know, you find that like having to ha- add all these stimulants and add all this excess um, stuff to keep the energy levels up. Mm. It's like, you know, what sucks is I remember being told this when I was younger. And I, it just doesn't resonate yet. No. Yeah. You know, That's, you know what it would have sold it to me? What? If, if I had Somebody sell me on the muscle building, fat loss effects of it and I its agree. importance. That would have made me do it. That, yeah, you're right. But the part of like, oh, you need it because it's good for you. And I'm, Fuck off. I'm good. I'm, I'm crushing. I can wake up early. No problem. Right. But if someone sold me on the fat loss and muscle building effects, right. I might have done it. And I don't know if we knew the effect necessarily how much of an impact it had back then. I remember reading like, get good sleep and eat a lot of food. Yeah. But um, I feel like it's one of those things we've kind of always we've known. Something like your mom would tell you. you Yeah, Yeah, that's why. Cool mom. Yeah, that's why you brush it off, right? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. that's why. So, uh, and it's tough because this person's asking for like his his roommate. Like, how do you help me out with my roommate overall health and wellness? He needs to work on his sleep. Well, so so I I have to help a homie out. It is telling them to sleep more. So I helped uh, Jessica with this because she had terrible sleep patterns when we first started dating. Like she was one of those go 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 coffee in the morning, don't need much sleep, and She'd wake up in the middle of the night or she'd wake up hella early. And so one thing that we did that really helped was we created a sleep routine. Uh, we, we reduced caffeine during the day and all that other stuff, but we did a sleep routine. So about one to two hours before bed, we shut the lights off and either use candlelight or go by really, really dim light. So it's now dark in the house. And, and what We've we try and- each other smoke signals. Yeah, no. What we try and do now is we try to mimic the sun. So if the sun sets and it's supposed to be dark outside, then we make it dark in the house. And at first it's weird, but then you get used to it. It's not a big deal. I mean, you know, we have enough light to see what we need to do. Turn off all electronics. And then we'll have like one or two cups of chamomile tea, which is really relaxing. Could you imagine being a teenage boy walking over to your house like when we were kids and seeing that and being like, what the fuck is going on here? Oh, they're, they're sacrificing Turn, another yeah. animal. What's up, bro? You can't afford to keep your lights <laughs> yeah, on? No, Turn no, your no, lights no. on, man. Well, you, you know what's funny is that at first I didn't really know that I didn't think this would make it a difference. It makes a big difference. It's huge. Because yeah, yeah. Then, I, then when we go on these trips and stuff and we don't do that and I try to go to sleep right after bright ass lights and... Oh, you know, it's hard. Did you ever like convert to the blue blocker thing? Yep. 
My you kids, did? I have my kids wear them. Really? So at night when the kids are, if we're watching, if the kids are watching, because I'll let them watch a little bit of TV or something or, you know, before bed, um, I'll have them put on the blue blockers at least an hour or two before bed. Oh, that sucks. You yep. fuck up their whole cartoon experience. Uh, no, why? <laughs> because it changes the colors. Dude. No, <laughs> no, the ones I bought, you they don't do that. Oh, they don't. Uh, no, I got these really expensive ones that don't change. The How's color. that possible? Nice. If it's a blue blocker and you're watching TV, wouldn't it block the blue? Light? I don't know. Science, Adam. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, they, they're they're clear. I've tried watching before, and I'm like, this fucking sucks. It's still orange. Yeah. I feel like I just yeah. went back 15 years on television, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I got myself a TV in like the 70s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Like, like the TV's all like fuzzy now because yeah. I got these glasses on. Your tank, so not no, high def. Tank you know, colored. <clears throat> this is something that has been. Uh, really tough for me because I've, I was never like somebody who got good sleep. I was definitely the person who uh, wore it like it was a badge of honor to not sleep. Mm -hmm. And I do recognize it's not as simple as just going to bed for me. I, there, I have to prep myself before I go to bed to have a successful night of sleep. If I think I'm just going to work and do whatever and watch TV all the way till it's time for me that I, I got to go to sleep or it's getting close to midnight or whatever, uh, I always have a hard time sleeping. But if I do this, and I've put this together now from, from playing around with all this and all the talk that we've done with the blue blocking and all that shit, the biggest thing for me is turning on, turning off all those those bright lights in your house when the sun goes down. Like turning that turning that all off and it's crazy how big of a difference it makes makes a huge difference. It huge, makes a right? huge difference. And then another bad habit of mine is the phone and the computer screen, you know, close to my face, you know, right before I go to bed. So I, if I shut it off at seven, it's that's plenty of time for me to completely wind down, and then it's really easy to me, for me to transition and go to bed. Did you do now that you've been doing that? Because you had really bad sleep before. Like how, if you were to rate your sleep before versus now, how big of a difference? Oh, it's a huge difference, and I can tell by the way I get up. I mean, I, I get I don't have to use an alarm most of the time. If I have to be up really early, like when we fly out somewhere, I have to get up at four thirty. Like that's mm. a little abnormal. But what about caffeine? Have you limited your caffeine in the evening? I'm never I'm never into caffeine at night. Never. Okay. Good. Oh yeah. No. No. I. I don't. I can't do caffeine. What's well, the latest you've gone? Yeah. Four o'clock. Yeah. Four o'clock is. I have that. Uh, three, to, I've four o'clock. Get that I, down to a science. If right. I, I if I go beyond that, I'm screwed. Yeah. yeah if I yeah. go anytime, and even like four, sometimes mm. will fuck up my sleep a little bit. Like it's. So I don't even like to flirt with that. Come around noon or one, I'm pretty much I'll done. I'll tell you what's not good for sleep: drinking alcohol. Oh, that's the worst. It's terrible. You have yeah. the worst sleep when you drink alcohol. It I, is. I'm horrible with that. But some people think because it does wind you down or they that, pass out. Yeah, it's like oh, they get. The, that's the, that's you usually have like a drink of wine or whatever you know, like to to kind of cool everything. It 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 does not contribute that's, to good sleep. That sleep quality right there, yes. like you'll it'll knock you out. So this is how I use Brain FM. Is Brain FM is my hack when I don't follow my steps like I'm supposed to. Like so, in a perfect world, I come home. You know, we light a fire, sun's down, lights are off. We're pretty much by fire and maybe watching the 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 big screen for a little bit. Then, you know, seven o'clock rolls around and uh, Katrina and I are like listening to an audio book like that's that night right there. I'll have the most lovely sleep ever if I if I follow those steps. Now, real life, sometimes that, that shit doesn't happen and I'm busy or forget to turn the lights off or I don't even get home until late. and I've been going still. This is when I really try and use Brain FM because people ask me all the time about that. I, say, I use it a lot because. For, that unfortunately happens to me a lot where I'm not perfect. I'm always striving, though, to do this all naturally, right? I want to try and like do that, let the lights all come down, stop staring at a screen at seven or eight, beyond seven, eight o'clock, do something that's more like either me reading or listening to a book. That winds me down really well. Otherwise, if I can't get to that or I don't do all those steps, mm -hmm. it's kind of like the same way I supplement with green juice. With vegetables, it's like always the goal. I'm not. I would never tell someone to go take green juice every single day instead but, of having vegetables. right. Instead of having vegetables, it's like my goal always is to not have to use that. But I love to supplement with that. Well, the same thing is with Brain FM. I use this as a tool of like when I I know the steps I need to do to have a perfect night's sleep, and then I know what happens when I don't, and then that's when I use that hack. Next question is from Andrew Beth. Do you think there are any health benefits to high carb diets? So I do. yeah. Yeah, I, not necessarily because it's high carb, more so because it's low other things. 
So typically, if you have a high carb, because if you have a high carb, high fat, high protein diet, well, then you just have a high calorie diet. High calorie diet. <laughs> so, so this is in context. Shoveling it in. So when someone says high carb, it's in context to or comparison to the other macronutrients. I definitely think so. When I go on my vegan days, where sometimes my vegan days are mostly low calorie vegetables, <laughs> but there's been times where I'll do quinoa or buckwheat or you know a little bit of uh, you know of carbohydrates with my vegetables. So in context, those days are high carb for me because I don't eat very much protein at all, except for what comes from my veggies. And the fat is, you know, a little bit of olive oil here and there. Is there a benefit to that? You better believe it. I mean, when you fast, one of the reasons why when you fast, you get all these health benefits is because you have low protein and low carbohydrates. Yeah. So low protein also has its benefits in terms of reducing inflammation, um, in, in terms of uh, reducing cancer risk, uh, it, it, reducing the some of the aging effects that food has on the body, uh, te- tends to come from a lot of protein, and I think it mimics it more mimics how our bodies kind of evolved eating, because we've talked about this on the show for sure. Humans, you know, through most of human evolution, for sure we weren't like, oh, got my proteins and fats, got to have my carbs, got to have my my veggies, and then they have this balanced meal or whatever. But meals were not balanced. They, that's a recent thing where we think we need to have, you know, so many of each macro. Right. The most meals were probably I killed this animal, so guess what we're eating for the next few days? All protein and all fat. Yeah. And oh look, we we found some some vegetables and stuff. Guess what we're eating for the next you know couple of days? Well, I definitely like high carb for you know athletic purposes if if you deplete first, right? So if you go through the process of uh, being you know, glycogen depleted, and then you come back, you re- reintroduce. So it's a timing thing as far as now that I'm going to have like this type of a fuel to give me immediate source. So when I do any kind of really uh, strenuous, like, um, you know, fast twitch type exercises and power, um, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's a great fuel source to run off of. So I think high carb diets have got a, a really bad rap in the last few years. And I think part of that is is less about the it's high, high carb and really how much our lifestyle has changed as humans. I think that part of why keto and paleo are such the crave right now is because people we're so are, sedentary. Yeah, we're so sedentary. We don't move anymore. Right. I mean, I w- you know what would suck is a a low carb diet back in like you know ni- 1901, fucking <laughs> baling hay all day no long. And fuck yeah, you know what I'm saying you're, you're a farmer. Just yeah, like, yeah. Fuck ketones. I wouldn't want to be running on ketones back then. You know, yeah. I would want some quick sugars. No thanks. Yeah. So I think that I think these high carb diets have gotten you know people try and demonize carbs. And even though we're very pro ketogenic, we're pro paleo. Um, we're pro. I mean, I'm pro everything. It's like food. There's. It's well, just as long as it makes sense, you yeah, know, for your lifestyle. And just like with any other diet, I would tell the same person too that it, I do. I'm pro high carb diet, but I wouldn't run that all the time. You know. No, and there's some. Uh, I mean, there's situation. Vegan diets tend to be high in carbohydrates, and for some mm-hmm. people, vegan diets are extremely healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you look at the world's uh, blue zones this is where people live, a disproportionate amount of people live to 100 or older compared to the rest of the world. Some of them do have carbohydrate-heavy uh, diets. Um, again, it's all in proportion to the other macronutrients. Now, this doesn't mean high sugar or high processed foods because carbohydrates come in many different forms. Um, I, you know, You have the whole grains, which for some people are great. Other people, they have intolerances to some of them. So then you can go rice and buckwheat and quinoa, um, starches like potato, um, certain types of you know uh, corn. You know those things can definitely have for some people health benefits, and they feed different bacteria in the gut. That's another thing. There's too. also benefits to running a heart, high carb diet too. If you're somebody who knows they intermittently introduce things like wine or cake or things in their diet, if you don't ever eat something like that and you follow a ketogenic diet and then you do those things. I think the I feel like it's far more detrimental to your body as far as where, how, what you feel like afterwards. I think it's gives you more metabolic flexibility when you when you do that with uh, with cycling high carbs in every once yeah, in a while. Yeah, one of the problems too is when people in the past high carb diets were usually relegated to um, endurance athletes, yeah. so like runners, cyclists, they're the ones that were pushing carbs, <clears throat> and people who did that some many times had negative effects. But if you look at the food that they were eating to get the carbs, it was a lot of pasta, a lot of bread, 
a lot of these kinds of grains. Starchy, yeah. Yeah, and it, it wasn't the processed. Yeah, the less the less processed, more natural types of carbohydrates. Which, again, this is a lot of this is anecdote, but a lot of people uh, do better on those versus the you know the, the 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 pastas and the breads and those kinds of grains. So, Doug, what's the next question? Hey guys, Doug here. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So this is from, let's see, Scott Finding Wellness. In your experience, does it take longer for someone who has been overweight their entire life to lose weight than someone who has only been overweight for a few years or so? Sal, take it away. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Doug, I'll do it. Uh, all, right, Doug. All, right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, it is harder, for much sure, harder, for sure, much right. harder. There's yeah. a few reasons why. Um, <clears throat> let's just focus on the behavioral component. Let's not look. And don't even worry about the physical component because oh, that's that's part that, of it. That's a great point. Mm. Uh, but the behavioral component is it harder to change your behavior if your behavior has been something that you've been practicing for two years versus something you've been practicing your whole life? Well, there's your answer right there. All right. Um, if you've been overweight your entire life, the odds are you've probably not had a very active life and definitely probably have not been eating very well. You've, you've overeaten quite a bit and your food choices are probably not that great. And you were probably raised that way. A lot of kids were when I was a kid and in, in today too. Although I feel like today kids are, or parents are a little bit more aware than they were when I was a kid. But when I was a kid... You know, you're talking about the 80s. This was the heyday of processed food. Mm -hmm. Like the 80s had an explosion because TV dinners got introduced in the 50s, I I think. mean, hot pockets were invented. Then the 60s kind of, but still mom was still cooking at home, home, you know, home cooked meal. 70s, it started getting more popular. Then the 80s happened. And what happened in the 80s, you, you had an explosion in the divorce rate, which really started to take off in the 60s, but really the 80s is when it hit like monumental levels. So you had a lot of, you know, single parent households or, or kids that were latchkey where they would come home from school. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, moms were working now, you know, in the eighties when it became regular, moms were working, dads were working, kids come so home. You just got to come home, warm up some bagel bites. Yeah. yeah. Convenience became uh, a priority much more than in the past. You know, in the past, a parent was home, usually mom, and she would prepare uh, food for you. It was home cooked. Well, when nobody's home, you know, both people work. I know this, you know, I was like this with my, when I was married, like it's tough. It's a tough gig. And on top of it, you want to cook dinner, which takes an hour and then you got to clean everything. You know how easy it is to just be like, you know what, let's just buy some food or let's just pull this out of the freezer. You guys want a pizza? You want some cereal? You want, you know, whatever. It's super easy. So when I was a kid, this is when processed foods fucking exploded, like literally went crazy I, you know, my household, luckily my, you know, my parents are a bit old school. I ate a home cooked dinner most of the time. However, I also had a shit ton of processed food in my house all the time. So lunch was usually something processed because my mom didn't make us all lunch all the time. Sometimes she did, but it was always just dinner. And breakfast was always processed, was always a sugary cereal or a toaster strudel or a pop tart or some other, you know, bullshit. And when I would go to school, my lunches, which were, you know, a sandwich with some kind of a processed snack, didn't even compare to my friends' lunches. My friends' lunches, they'd have like a some kind of a soda or fruit fake drink. They'd have some kind of a packaged something or food. Squirt. They would have squirt. Yeah. That was a real common one. Yeah. Um, and and it was I'm just still around. It was like just syrup. It yeah. was. It was I, I was so jealous too when I saw. I, kids know, I remember those. So it was really fucking bad. So you've got all these kids who grew up this way. So now that you're growing up eating this, your palate is fucking thrown off because right. you're so used to engineered foods that when you eat whole foods or natural foods, they taste like shit. They taste bland. That can change though, and that will change if you put the time in, I is promise. It, but how hard is it to change when uh, that's is. your wiring since you were a kid? It is, but but I'll, I mean, I'll-, I'll you're, you're a testament to Oh, fucking A, I was that kid for sure. I mean, we had oh, candy forever, and I it was all the way through high school for sure and into my even my 20s, so this was something that it was- Later in life, did I break out of this? It wasn't until like I started seeing the autoimmune issues popping up where I started to try and like, okay, what the fuck's going on with me? And I'm sure it, this didn't help the cause of me, you know, consuming as much garbage and sugar as I, I was always consuming. 
But the, what, the question was more like, a, what the question to me was, in your experience taking long for someone who has been overweight? You know what? Here's the thing that I, I want to talk about what I see with this this client that's really common that I think is really important to address is a lot of times when you have a long way to go like this and you've decided you're going to make this change, you're super motivated and you kind of you kind of throw the whole kitchen sink at it. And I think in my experience, the most common thing that I've had to do is to coach people through this process of not overdoing it too fast, too soon. Because what happens when you've got a hundred pounds or more to lose, you start, you want, you want the pounds to add up so fast. Like you're looking at the hundred pounds and you're going like, God, I want to get five pounds this week and seven pounds next week yeah. and Even shows, 30 pounds. Yeah. Right. And shows like the biggest loser just mm-hmm. play right into this. And I absolutely hate that because the, if you're going to keep it off forever, you really want to go nice and slow and gradual. And I think it's important that if you're going to, if, if you're going to set yourself up for long-term success, you don't want to see tons of pounds coming off you week over week. No, and, and that's hard to tell somebody. We at need this to, point. well, let's break it down, right? So you're you've been overweight for most of your life, mm-hmm. and now you want to lose weight. So why is it important to go slow? Well, there's a there's a couple of reasons why. Now, psychologically speaking, uh, you want to challenge yourself because challenge is what gives uh, meaning to things. So if you could just snap your fingers and lose all that weight. Um, you'll quickly find that you're, if you were to compare yourself to a version of yourself that lost that weight through changing behaviors, eating right, through exercise, there's much more to gain from the hard way because challenge gives things meaning. It means more. There's more to learn. So you do want to challenge yourself. So what Adam's saying isn't go slow, like don't challenge yourself. Right, right. Challenge yourself. However, you want to challenge yourself with something that is realistic. So something you know that will be a challenge, but you also know I can probably do that. Don't challenge yourself with stuff that you realistically think I'm probably going to fail at because if you string enough fails in front of you together, you've lost your hope. You don't want to do it anymore. Like, fuck it. I'm not winning. This sucks. You know, I've already co- totally destroyed my new diet or whatever. Um, it's it's not going to work. So starting very slow is super important. And sometimes, and this was Adam brought this up a long time ago. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Sometimes the best thing to do is to not take anything away, but rather than add, rather than uh, to take things away, add things. Right, add healthier stuff. That's it. So instead of so maybe the first goal, maybe the first goal isn't to, you know, cut out sugar or something like that. Maybe the first goal is I'm going to eat one large serving of vegetables every day, and do that first, because that can be challenging, but it's realistic. I think it's more realistic than cutting something out for most people. Start with that and then and then take it from there. Now, physically speaking, is it harder to lose weight if you've had it on your whole life? Besides the psychological, yes, there's evidence to suggest that. Um, you add fat cells to your body uh, of only a few times in your life. One is you know when you're a baby. Another time is when you go through puberty. And then another time is in the third trimester of pregnancy if you're a woman. So if you're gaining a lot of body fat as a kid, you know you could very well just be adding more fat cells to your body, which then makes it more difficult yeah. uh, to, to lose later on. So, um, but this is not to say that there isn't hope. You know, I don't want to crap anybody out. Like, there's a lot of hope. You just have to change your behaviors and that takes a long time. So be patient with yourself. Yeah, I think, I mean, it can be daunting, um, especially if it's like you've been overweight your entire life and you, you just don't know what it looks like to, um, to live a different type of a lifestyle. And so, you know, to... That, and this is all weighed in on like how they're coming in and what kind of mentality they have going towards this change. Are they really open to changing their lifestyle or are they just wanting to lose weight? Right. And it's a totally different process. So I think that, you know, it's it's definitely going to depend on the person and their intent throughout the process. Because yeah. somebody, too, that had already, you know, been um, in shape and then got way out of shape may look at coming back into shape as like almost impossible because they knew, you know, the the, the process to them was even more scary. It's also, is, you also a, get used to it, right? If you've been right. fat your whole life, you, you get used to it, you know? If it happened over a course of a couple of years, you might be more motivated because you're like, oh, I remember what it was like. Yeah. This, is all, this is somebody too that I would love to see um, inside of our forum because of the support that's there and how many people that has actually gone through this themselves. So, if you know Scott, I don't know where you're at financially. If you can afford to get in the forum, if you can't, then you reach out to me and I'll let you in the forum for free. 
because this is the type of person that I think it's important. That's very nice, Adam. The way you start this journey is is uh, extremely crucial. In, yeah, you need a community. Yeah, and I, and I think uh, the forum has got tons of people, man, that uh, would love to share uh, their process and, and the steps they took. So make sure you reach out. Next question is from Jeff Sherman, 22, working at a new open box gym as a personal trainer. Our one-on-one sessions are 40 minutes long, and we can only train in a circuit-style hit program. (laughs) My manager believes this will generate more clients down the line because of the fast-paced movement. I don't think that's the right choice. Just wanted to get your advice on circuit-only style training. So (laughs) go with your intuition. So Jeff, so here's what I want you to do. If If your boss doesn't listen to Mind Pump, send him this episode. Because I'm going to give a message right now to your manager. (laughs) You're an idiot. Okay? You're not a good manager, and no, that's not going to work. Now, if you're creating a circuit gym, and that's what you guys do, like it's 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 like an orange theory or something like that, that's fine. But if this is one-on-one training, then what the fuck are you doing? Like all the value in one-on-one training is being able to individualize a training program. Might as well just take a class at that point. You are going to burn people out and you're trained, not only just your clients, you're going to burn your trainers out. If you limit your trainers to this much, uh, you know, to what they can do in this particular... You're, you're going to have a tough time okay, well, take getting a de- good trainers. Take a deep breath because now, now obviously Jeff has triggered all of us because <laughs> obviously a soft spot Trigger. for all of us to, that have managed managers for a long time and would probably choke a manager out for something. Now, let's, let's think about this, that this is probably somebody who's been promoted very young. and very, I mean, I was 22 years old when I was managing a team that everybody was older than I was and I probably This is didn't. a very surface understanding of fitness. Right, exactly. And and maybe this manager doesn't know that. Okay. So this is to Jeff. You need to understand that maybe you're more educated. Maybe you're uh you listen to mind pump on a regular basis. So the information that you've you've received over the last two years is probably more than what this manager uh, potentially has. And so having a little bit of compassion and understanding that. Now a great book that I recommend to people that are in situations like this uh, was John C. Maxwell's uh, 360 Leader. And that's just about what it's like uh, leading and managing uh, in middle management. So what's it like for someone like you who has people above you and below you, and especially when you feel like you're smarter than they are, and how do you navigate around that? Because at the end of the day, uh, even though Sal's passionate and wants to tell your boss to fuck off you can't say that <laughs> yeah. or else you probably won't have a job yeah. probably won't have a job so i think that um man it, this is a really tough one if he's enforcing it because if you if you truly feel that um this you're you're not doing a good service to your clients and you need to move on this might be your your yeah, you might want to look at another gym yeah you you may want to look especially if this is coming from leadership right because obviously their their concern is to just burn as much calories and potentially lose somebody quick weight so they can show quick results and hopefully resign more people or bust more people in and out and try that's, to be all like time efficient you yeah know, looking at it from like a numbers management you know businessy kind of a mindset right, it doesn't right. work with training people but you'll see we just released a hit program right now and in the hit program comes with a warning that tells people they should not follow this longer than six weeks and yeah, there's a time and a place for it. Yeah, hit God, imagine a, doing this all the time. No, but that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, he's talking about everybody's doing it all the I, time. I, I mean, I could see it being a successful business model if that was the business model. Like if if it was an if it was a because it's a big box gym, which is a little different. But like Orange Theory, there's a style. There's what, how they follow things, and I could see that. Right, right. You know, people come in for that specific type of class. But I don't know, man. Like. Yeah, but that's a class. This is one on one, like you had mentioned earlier. Yeah. Like one on one is that's you're taking all the value of one on one is I, is the individualism is the totally the identifying you know problematic movements and 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 fixing it and like basically add you know adding strength to the entire body and, in, a, in a you know measured way. Is he? I mean. So uh, here's the thing too is if he's just suggesting it and he thinks that that's what you should do and he's coaching that he's just he doesn't know and like Sal said he's an idiot he doesn't know any better yeah. but if he's not and he's not he's forcing, not enforcing it yeah, yeah just do you do your fucking yeah. thing you don't need to don't waste your time trying to tell your because right. that, that would be naive of you to think that you're going to 
you know, make your boss feel dumb and, and try and educate him. That's not going to go over very well. <laughs> I would at all. probably just do it the way I would do it, anyways. Right. And then if you said something and it turns into like a meeting thing, be like, cool, bring your boss. Exactly. That's you a know, great. And then we'll talk. Right. I would continue to do what I think is best for my clients. And yeah. then if if he was that, that dumb, like Justin said. It's a tough situation to be in because as a trainer, most, most fitness people um, have a passion for the clients, especially one-on-one. Like when you train someone one-on-one, you develop a bond with them. They trust you and you want to help them. I've seen many times where trainers are in this predicament where they, their boss or whatever is telling them to sell them particular product, products or supplements or tell them to do a particular thing. And then the trainer themselves know that that's not right for the client. That's a tough predicament to be in. But at the end of the day, I'm going to recommend that you be true to yourself it might hurt you in the short term. In other words, you might lose your job or whatever. But I don't. It's hard to live with yourself when you're doing things. Your clients will respect you, and that's what matters. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so check this out: uh, YouTube, Mind Pump TV, new videos posted all the time. Also, thirty days of coaching. We still got that going on. It's at MindPumpMedia.com. It's totally free. Lots of incredible information there. Get your friends signed up. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.